Welcome back and I've got an absolutely brilliant experiment to show you today. What we're going to look at is thermionic emission and the Edison effect. So yet again, I've been rooting around in the cupboard of the laboratory and I came across this planar diode. Now, um, I don't think it's been used in, well, I did 14 years, so I don't think it's been used maybe in 20 or 30 years. It's a lovely piece of apparatus, uh, very expensive. You can still buy them and they're sort of beyond 500 pounds. But it's a really interesting piece of equipment and it explains some very, very important physics. So what the planar diode consists of is a glass ball and inside that glass ball is nothing, there's a vacuum. And then there's a wire at this end, and I'll zoom in in a minute, that's coiled up and it's a piece of tungsten. And that tungsten is gonna be connected to a power supply and made very hot indeed. So basically it's a very hot light bulb filament. And then there's a gap between these two plates and at the other end, uh, with a vacuum between them is a metal plate. That's the anode and we're going to connect that to a positive power supply. So let's have a quick look inside our glass tube here. What we've got is a plate on the left and just in front of that plate is a coiled up piece of tungsten metal, the filament that when we turn it on is going to become hot. And then on the right hand side another metal plate. Now, uh, you might just wonder why there's a metal plate on the left-hand side. Um, that's connected to one side of the filament, and it makes sure that there's a uniform electric field between there and the anode plate. So, to show you the filament, I'll just turn up the filament supply a little bit, and you'll begin to see it glowing. There we go. So, this is basically a glorified light bulb on the left-hand side, with a vacuum inside this glass container and on the right hand side a metal plate that sits in front of the filament but not touching it and there's a vacuum between the two. Okay so let's get this wired up and working so you can see its characteristics and behaviour. So as you know as my physics teacher taught me always wire stuff up in front of your students. So uh, here we go for the filament and um, I'm going to connect this to a low voltage power supply and I'm not going to go up above about 7 volts. So that's that. And then I'm going to connect a voltmeter in parallel with a filament. And the reason for doing that is partly so I can keep an eye on how high I've turned the voltage. Because if I turn the voltage up too much, I could melt the filament. And if I melt the filament, um, I destroy the tube. Um, you can't get inside the tube and replace that filament. It's broken and then I've destroyed about £500 worth of equipment and I'll be in big trouble. But the other reason for using uh, a voltmeter with this is we're going to change the voltage on the filament. That'll have the effect of making the filament dimmer or brighter, or more importantly, cooler or hotter. And we're going to see how that affects the behaviour of the tube. Now, one or two of you might say, well, because you know something about these, you might say, well, why haven't you connected just to the AC output of the power supply? Normally you use 6.3 volts AC. It doesn't have to be DC. Um, the only reason I'm using DC here is because the meter I've got is a good one for filming with, and I've only got um, an analog meter here that's a DC voltmeter, but it doesn't make any difference. What I want you to see is the voltage changing and how the current through the tube changes and I keep an eye on this to make sure I don't burn out the filament. So all that's left to do is to connect up the high tension voltage to the anode. So now let's connect up the last bit of this experiment. So I'm going to go from an HT, high tension, old fashioned term for high voltage power supply, up to about 500 volts, through an analog ammeter, DC ammeter, and then from the ammeter, select that range for the time being, okay, up to the anode. So that's going to make the anode very, very positive. And to encourage the electrons off the uh, filament, 
I'm going to make the filament negative. In other words, I'm going to connect the filament to the negative of the high voltage power supply. So let's turn it on now and see what happens. So we've got it all wired up. Let's turn up the filament and you'll see it glowing red. And I'm going to turn that up looking at my voltmeter to about five and a half volts. There we go. And I'm not sure if you can see the ammeter, but uh, I'll zoom in in a minute. But if you look at the ammeter, it's not reading anything. But now what I'm going to do is make the anode more and more positive. And remember that there's a vacuum between the filament that's glowing and the anode on the right hand side of the tube. So here we go. Let's turn up the voltage on the high tension power supply. And you'll notice, really interestingly, we get a current flowing through the vacuum in the tube. So this is going to take a bit of explaining. Um, it's a really interesting effect, sometimes referred to as the Edison effect, but what it really is is thermionic emission. And what you notice is that when we have a hot filament in a vacuum and we have in front of it a metal plate that's positive, we find that we get a current flowing. Now, back in the day, they didn't know this was electrons, but what's really interesting is if we make the anode I know it's anode and positive if we make it negative. OK, so now let's turn the tube around electrically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the anode negative and I'm going to make the cathode positive. And the easiest way to do that is just to disconnect the two terminals on the power supply and turn them around. So I've left it all switched on so you can see that I'm not cheating. And it's the ammeter here you need to watch. So here we go. Disconnect. Turn around. And now we've got a negative anode and a positive cathode. The zero on the ammeter is there. Now that's a negative reading, so the zero is there. So we've got absolutely no current whatsoever through the tube if we make the anode negative. So there are no electrons passing through the vacuum between the two plates. But first, a little bit of history to explain this apparatus. So back in 1853, Edmund Becquerel discovered this effect. And he was actually the father of Henry Becquerel, the chap who was famous for his work with radioactivity. And as with a lot of science, other scientists were doing work. And a scientist called Frederick Guthrie, I think in about 1870s in uh, Britain, did some experiments with very hot metal spheres. And he found something really interesting about charged spheres when he heated them. He found that a sphere that was negative when it was heated lost its charge, but a sphere that was positive and hot never lost any charge. So he found this odd effect before the discovery of the electron by J.J. Thompson that only hot negative objects lost charge, but not positive ones. And what he was discovering there was thermionic emission. But then along came Edison with his light bulbs and changed everything. So Edison, as you know, was famous for developing the light bulb. And what he was trying to do was to find out why the filaments failed. And he liked to turn them up with a very high current to make them really bright, really hot. But the lamps didn't last very long, even though they were very bright. He also noticed a sort of colouring on the outside of the glass. Something was coming off the filament. So to investigate that, he put a metal plate near the filament, but not touching it, separated by the vacuum in the glass tube. And he noticed that if he made that metal plate positive, a very large current would flow through the system if the filament was very, very hot, very bright. But if he made the metal plate negative, never mind how bright the filament was, no current would flow across the vacuum. So what Edison had discovered was a one-way electrical device, and this process has become known 
as the Edison effect. Uh, it does get a little bit confused with the giving off of electrons from a hot filament, thermionic emission, which is sometimes called the Edison effect as well. But remember, the electron had not yet been discovered by J.J. Thompson. That only came about in 1897. Now, a scientist called Fleming in the UK was doing some work on this, and he appreciated the importance of a one-way electrical device. And in 1904, he patented the glass or thermionic diode. They call, um, in America, they call them tubes. Uh, we in the UK call them valves. This totally revolutionised electronics, electricity, and the birth and development of radio. And the rest is history. So let's start our explanation of this device, and it's really quite interesting. So the first thing is you need a hot filament. So if I turn the voltage down, if you remember, there's no current flowing in the tube. And this hot filament is made of tungsten, and you can get it up to about 1,000 degrees centigrade, approximately 1,000 Kelvin. And when you do, you get a current in the tube. And what's happening is electrons that are in the filament are getting very, very uh, large amounts of energy from the thermal energy in the system. And if that energy is enough to overcome the work function, the energy needed to get an electron out of the metal, then that electron will leave the filament and will end up in the vacuum. Now, it's left a positive space behind, so it's going to go back in. But if we have a positive plate some distance from the filament, we've got an electric field in here and we can attract those electrons to the positive plate and get a flow of current. But in reverse, it doesn't work at all. And the reason for that is we still get thermionic emission. So we've still got a large amount of thermal energy being used to boil the electrons off the hot filament. They leave behind a place that's positive and get attracted back into it. But if we make the anode negative, we've got an electric field that will repel electrons. In other words, if they were to boil off the filament, they'll be forced back onto it. In other words, this device will not attract electrons across it, so it will only conduct in one direction. And that, of course, is the nature of any diode. Now, you might say, well, this is a rather large diode. Well, yes, it is, but that's what they looked like back in the day. Nowadays, you've seen LEDs and you probably haven't seen microscopic semiconductor diodes. They use a completely different bit of physics. And it's pretty typical of all science that when these devices reach their peak in engineering design, a completely new bit of physics came along, took over, and apart from in very, very high current, high power applications, they're not used at all anymore, partly because they're very difficult to make and they do fail after a certain amount of time, but also they're extremely large. So back in the day, when computers did need diodes in them, the very early computers had rows and rows and rows of devices that looked a bit like this, thousands of them and they used to have to constantly be swapped out because they were failing. But modern computing devices have semiconductor diodes where you can cram hundreds of thousands of them onto a tiny chip. So these are now really, sadly, redundant. I'd like to show you just another couple of properties of the glass thermionic diode whilst I've got it wired up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the filament current down so uh, that's this meter here, and we've got no voltage on it now. And you'll notice that the anode current is zero. Now watch this meter, or just uh, watch the, uh, the diode filament get brighter and brighter. As I turn up the filament voltage, you'll begin to get some current on this meter. And as I turn it up more and more and more and more, and then it's gonna go off the scale, we get more and more current in the tube. So what's happening here is the filament's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And because electrons have different kinetic energies, as we give them more and more energy, more and more electrons come off the filament. And so we get a higher and higher current. I'm not gonna go up any higher than this because of course I might melt the filament. <laughs> 
Now, there's another very interesting property of these glass diodes. What I've done here is I've set the filament voltage to a fixed voltage. So it's about five volts. And um, so the filament is gonna stay at a constant temperature. And what I'm gonna do now is turn up the anode voltage. So this is the meter you want to watch. And as I turn up, it's as expected. You'll notice the current goes up and up and up. I'm gonna keep turning up and keep turning up and keep turning up and keep turning up and nothing happens. So what we're doing now is we're reaching what's called saturation current. In other words, if we turn the voltage up higher and higher and higher, we're not dragging any more electrons off the hot filament. So this is the highest current we can have for this filament temperature. And I've got to be a bit careful now, but if I turn up the filament temperature a little bit, you'll notice the current in the tube rises. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment as much as I did showing it to you. I love showing you these interesting, old fashioned, but really important pieces of apparatus. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.